So before we begin, I just wanted to point out that some people who study uh, the mechanics option for A-level further maths or AS further maths also do A-level physics. Um, and you may well find that there is some overlap in topics, so things that you've covered in physics uh, to varying degrees. Um, but for those of you who do physics, um, you need to be aware that there are going to be a number of students that are doing further maths that don't do A-level physics, and so we'll never have met topics like energy before, um, and so need to be introduced to it from scratch. Okay, um, so just because I'm going into this with the idea that you've never met these topics before. Okay, so that's really the best way in. Okay, so that I I treat everyone at a level playing field. So, this section we're going to be introduced to energy, um, and you probably have some conceptual idea of uh, what energy is or um, how it works. So, uh, you'll probably have heard of things like uh, elastic energy, so um, essentially the you know, stretching of solid objects. Um, or chemical energy um, and through uh, the burning, when, so when a fuel burns, uh, radiant energy, so carried by light, um, thermal or heat energy. Um, but there are two that we focus on, and that is kinetic energy and potential energy. So kinetic energy is all about um, looking at a moving object, so the energy within a moving object. And potential energy is the energy that um, an object has based upon its position. So uh, the higher it is, the more gravitational potential energy the object has. Now, energy is measured in joules, so we use the capital J to represent that. And if you're wondering kind of like how that breaks down into uh, SI units, um, then a joule, so one, one joule is one kilo meter squared per second per second okay now uh, to the uninitiated this will look very complicated um, but you may well uh, have met what a Newton is okay so you will have met uh, forces within the mechanics section of the A-level math so you'll have heard of Newtons um, you may have seen it written in terms of kilos, uh, meters, and seconds. Um, so that is one kilo meter per second per second. That is one Newton. And of course, the thing that's different here is that I am missing a meter. So I'll put that on the end, and that would obviously make the meter squared. So this bit here is Newtons. So this is one Newton meter. So you get to the point of going, OK, well, that means that energy measured in joules has got something to do with a force multiplied by a distance. OK, so as I said, we are going to be working with kinetic energy. So kinetic energy, often abbreviated to Ke, and gravitational potential energy. So often abbreviated to GPE. And together, they are referred to as mechanical energy. OK? 
Okay, so mechanical energy combines kinetic energy and gravitational potential energy. So in the following videos, what we're going to learn about is uh, how we calculate kinetic energy. So how can we work out that what that is? Um, how can we calculate the gravitational potential energy? How are they linked together? So we'll talk about the conservation of mechanical energy. We'll also be introduced to what we mean by work, work done, and uh, then into the work energy principle. And where we're really going there is the work energy principle we will be able to use to solve problems that we have met within A-level maths um, without having to utilise uh, SUVAT, for example. Okay, So there will be a number of scenarios um, that we will consider that you could do using A-level maths techniques, but we are going to use an energy method to do that. Okay, So quite often uh, in exams, they will say use energy methods. And it's really talking about utilising the work energy principle in order to solve the problem. Okay, so that is what we are working towards. Uh, and first, we will introduce what kinetic energy and gravitational potential uh, gravitational potential energy are, and how we can calculate them.